following conversation is with Mr. Dara Olanio. He's a lawyer and a writer. I really hope you enjoyed this conversation, given how important what we discussed about is. This conversation is going to push us, particularly Africans, on how we view ourselves in respect to other continents and cultures. I really hope you enjoyed this conversation. If you have not subscribed, please hit the subscribe button. That's going to help us get bigger guests and facilitate us to have better conversations and more interesting conversations and learn more from really interesting people. Thank you so much. And now, my dear friends, Mr. Dara Olanio. Dara, welcome to the show. Thank you very much, man. Yeah. Okay. The, the first question, the first question that, that I want to ask is, um, how stressful was getting your PVC? Because I've been hearing stories about places that you know that are not in like places aside from where I'm staying. How crazy it was. Yeah. Uh, you won't even believe I've not gotten my PVC yet. What happened? I like I had my PVC since 2019. Yeah. Mm. But that one got damaged. Funny story, I lost my wallet. Mm. Then I found, there some guys found the wallet for me. Okay. In some bush, like a year after I lost it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And they brought mm. it back to my hall of residence in UI, Bilo. Because mm. yeah, I graduated yeah, yeah. at the yeah, 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 then the Bilo over here called me and like gave me like my ID card and a bunch of stuff back. But then my PVC was damaged because I tried to use it to register at the bank. And yeah. the bank said they couldn't find it on the system. Mm. So I basically applied for a new one. And I've been going, these guys have just been posting me, posting me. And every time they post me, I tell them, ah, so I won't vote this year. Then I'll be like, ah, no, 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 you vote, you vote. <laughs> okay, when will I vote? <laughs> like, this thing is in a few weeks. Yeah. I've not got to my business. Yeah. You are saying you vote, you vote. It's, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm convinced it's a tactic. A friend of mine, a, a, a friend of mine in Lagos, same thing, mm. same thing. He went five times, five I times. No, and to you make know, my what me, I don't even understand is, Shebi is like an entire digital system, yeah. Yeah. If I have my VIN, why yeah. does it matter that I don't have the physical PVC? You get. I understand. Like, shouldn't there be a way I can give you my VIN? Like it's an identification number. Mm. I'll give you my VIN. You. Mm. Blah, blah, blah. I, I get to vote. It shouldn't be so difficult. That's reasonable. But you know, Nigeria now, if we never create problem. Yeah, yeah, we never, we have not started. That's actually uh, reasonable. Yeah. Given that, given that the, the new systems, um, the way the new system works is that every, every, um, every POS, this, every election center has a particular number of people that can only vote there. Exactly. So it, it, be, there, there is no way that they will not be able to identify you. And also there's no way that mm -hmm. like you, you vote in center, you then enter bike. <laughs> enter car, but start going to center this thing. And exactly. immediately your VIN works. It's not going to work in another place again. It cannot another happen. Again. Uh, like, like, that place will recognize your VIN because you your recognize. VIN is not under the word. Do you get? Yeah. But yeah. you know, like, like it's like one of my like I, I usually tell one of my guys, you know, if you if you look at Nigeria's problems like these guys are trying to move forward, yeah, then you'll be confused. Because you'll be like, ah. Isn't it, isn't it so obvious? But then when you realize that these guys are not trying to move forward, <laughs> yeah, yeah, everything yeah. starts to make sense. Yeah, yeah, it's 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 crazy. It's crazy. I just yeah. said, I just said, let me start with that, yeah, because mm. now nah, it's a it's a spas now. It's a spas now, and it's it's crazy now. Yeah, imagine imagine like we we have lost a comrade like this now, eh? <laughs> Either, <laughs> <laughs> are there, are there, are there are many more. I read that. I read somewhere that I think it was just only one state or something like that, sir. That over okay. nine over nine hundred thousand people did not collect their PVC. Yeah, that's insane. Yeah. That's insane. Yeah. Wow, that that's yeah. just and with this thing that he said now, personally, it should because if you carry your VIN and you go to the place, you should it should work. You should be able to vote. There's no reason why you should be able to vote, but you know it's just what it is. It's what it is. Are you got your PVC now, Abby? Yeah, Enugu is chill now. Enugu is chill, and, uh, and to be fair, to be fair, we have someone that we know someone that that works in the distance. Yes, oh, okay. So okay. my own, uh, so so. Uh, <laughs> the, 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 the is working for good. <laughs> <laughs> you understand? 
there was at at um, what is it called in I would argue that in Igbo states they are not joking. Like I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. <laughs> You yes, that uh, you hear some of these things about um in, in Lagos that like that my friend that I told you about his Igbo. And so if an Igbo man is coming, like he, let, let's assume for a second that they are actually beginning it, that they are, they, are, they, are, they are trying to work it now. If you see an Igbo man that is coming, that is coming for his PVC, you probably don't want him to collect the PVC. Let's assume that you probably don't want him to collect his PVC yeah. because there's a reasonable chance that the person he's going to vote for vote for yes, the Mr. underdog Peter. yeah yeah so it's crazy yeah what it is uh how do you define mentality like because because i'm trying to lay a reasonable groundwork for what what we're about to discuss how would you how would you define mentality uh, very simply mentality will be like a lens through which you view the world mm. basically yeah do you understand i think um, like at, at the very core it's like the lens through which you view the world it's like your perspective basically your mentality is your perspective, perspective of, of how things work well, well, that's that's the sense that makes sense okay and so um the, 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 i would imagine that there will be different types now they are, they are over 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 as we, as we grow older we see different types of mentality and everything so uh yes definitely 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 so, uh I, I don't even feel like um like uh, each person is just one thing do you get what do you like mean? Uh, a person's i don't feel like each person is just one mentality like you can't just say someone is just this you know no no nobody is that uh, nobody's personality is that flat nobody's personality is that basic human beings are complex okay so i feel like uh, overall, someone's worldview, mm -hmm. do you understand, will mm -hmm. be like a combination of perspectives, do you understand, based on their background, their temperament, many factors, do you yeah, get? Yeah. So there's a worldview, then there's a mentality. So of course, here yeah, there are different types of mentalities. It's, it's, you could, yeah, it's a word that you can basically attach any adjective to. Okay. Do you understand? Okay. It's just basically um, understanding how a person views the world from a certain angle. Do you understand? Okay. How yeah. would, how how would you differentiate between a world view and mentality? I mean, I'm trying to understand that. How did okay. Uh, okay. So how I would say it is. Your your world view is the sum total of how you see the world. Okay. Do you understand? And yeah. how you interact with the world. Okay. While your while a mentality is is more situation specific, do you understand? I understand. It's I understand. more, yeah. It's like uh, I'm trying to think of an analogy that can cover it. It's like worldview is uh, Champions League, okay, and mentality is <laughs> Barcelona. I don't know why I opted for. A I know nothing about football. <laughs> <laughs> I the, 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 uh, what I'm try, trying to communicate is share the whole and the part. Do you understand? Okay, okay. Is 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 it reasonable to put it like this? That world views, what views, um, how you how you see the world, how you see, um, I'll say this part of reality of what's going on, and mentality is how you approach it. Is that is that a reasonable way to put it? Uh, well. I would say yes, in the sense that your mentality would influence how you approach specific situations. Do you understand? Yes. 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 But your worldview is the sum total of how you do view the world. So yes, actually, that is correct. Okay. Um, uh, yes, in a manner, it's correct. Okay. Say that. Okay. And so, um, given that, um, what, 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 what we plan to discuss was, you know, we plan to discuss about um, victim mentality. Uh, I like yeah. I, li I like to I, I like this I like I like when people first like before they have before they get into any discussion I always like to know that you know, the the person I'm, I'm I'm discussing with understands like to what a, exactly they're talking yeah, about yeah to a huge extent what they are talking about the best way yeah, to yeah. ask that person that type of question is is, is for the person to still man the, the other side mm. do you understand okay. the, so if, if i'm discussing with someone let's say you're having a religious argument you say still man the atheist view 
as a, as someone that is from as someone that is a religious person and the person around you so how would you still man that um, victim mentality because it's it's not it's not unreasonable it's not unreasonable that people have uh more god like, okay, okay just just, just I don't put words in your mouth. Just um, still man the vic victim mentality, like the that idea. You can, you can define it and then now still man it. Like what what exactly is the point that the people that have this type of mentality? What exactly are they trying to communicate? No, first of all, it's it's not really victim mentality. No, that's a different thing entirely. Mm. Um, it's slave mentality. Slave mentality. So and how we differ is that um, I'm guessing victim mentality is. themselves as a victim in every okay. given situation. Okay. Yes, which is one which is a societal phenomenon. Okay. But the slave mentality that I'm referring to is a mentality that is particularly common amongst colonized people. Do you understand? Yes. Where they have this ingrained belief of the superiority of Western countries. Do you understand? or um, European countries that colonize them, yeah, and yeah. an ingrained um, belief in the inferiority of their own person, their culture, their way of life, their perspectives, do you understand? understand. Their, their, their realities, okay. a belief in the inherent inferiority of your, your own self and the superiority of someone else. And you know, of course, it's it's a very difficult it's a very difficult conversation to have. You know, I'm like I'm on my class group page. I'm a nuisance because I'm always accusing people of slave mentality. I heard about I heard about you. We heard about you. <laughs> I know people are always giving me back, like uh, because yeah. it's a very tough conversation to have. It's a difficult thing to tell someone that you think less of yourself. You understand? And you know, these are people that, as individuals, they don't think less of themselves. Do you get? They could meet. Um, um, you know, maybe an individual of maybe from an from an from a Western country or from a European country, mm -hmm. and they wouldn't particularly think themselves as individuals less. Do you understand? Okay. Strictly, strictly speaking, mm -hmm. but on a more general scale of the identity, do you understand? Of okay. who they are mm -hmm. as people, where they come from, their heritage. Okay. There is that subtle feeling of inferiority, and you know, it is so. It's so pervasive, it's so subtle that it shows in everything, literally everything, from uh, from from governance to education to entertainment to day-to-day -day interactions. Do you understand? Even memes on the internet, it shows in basically everything. Do you get? That is how that is how pervasive a mentality is. Yeah. So it's like it's it's a very fundamental way through which people view life. That meant sometimes people aren't particularly aware of you get. So it's okay. always a difficult conversation to have. Um, like you said, in their defense, you know, you have to consider the fact that most people don't care about lofty concepts like heritage or you know nationality or where I come from or culture. Mm -hmm. Most people don't care. You get. It's like most yeah, people just want yeah, to live yeah. their lives, be with their friends, you know, exactly, do their work, make money. They don't really care about this. Yeah, things. I shall shake their ass so, on the yacht. Yeah, exactly. So, when 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 people are confronted with these ideas, so to speak, it doesn't really mean anything to them. They have no reason to look beyond the reality they've always known. You understand what I'm saying? Okay. So, if I don't really care about culture or heritage or where I come from, there are many things that will fly over my head about how I view myself, because I, I'm not really bothered about that aspect or that idea, do you understand? Okay. So, you know, most people are born in a world where African countries are doing poorly. You know, um, the countries where they come from are doing poorly. Yeah. They've learned over time from young, TV, media, in day-to-day -day interactions with people, adults, they've learned over time to associate themselves and their identity with that backwardness. Do you understand? Interesting. While associating the identity and culture of people in more developed countries with development. So it's a simple, oh, these are the cool kids and these are the uncool kids. You know, it's like in school. Yeah, but everybody knows. 
it's, it's not like the, you, you ever go to a class to say, hmm, this is what we define as a cool kid. Cool kid. kid. You understand? They just have it. Everybody just knows. Just not. But, but, just but, but wouldn't you say okay. that, to, at least to, to a reasonable extent, we should, that obviously people, people admire um, places where the grass is greener. Wouldn't you say that to a reasonable extent that they should, you know, like there's nothing wrong in admiring things that other countries have. But is it are you saying that you can admire the things that, that other countries have, but not I don't say cultural things, not things that will strip you of your identity. I, an example yes. an example of this is that you can admire that they have a very good police force and people don't die ridiculously. But at the same time you may not admire um, let's say some parts of their music. I I, I think um, culture as an music culture can come out through music or the way they interact yes. with each other is it, is it, am i getting you am i getting you right? exactly you know it's the idea that it's it's a it's a fallacy of association you right. get. so you say um because this guy has nice nikes yeah because this guy has nice shoes okay he must be a kind person you get yeah. when you spell it out like that it makes no sense but it's the subtle assumption that people make. You know, you assume that because these people are technologically advanced, you know, because they have systems that work, then it automatically means everything, like it automatically means that if you also want to have a system that works, mm -hmm. you have to strip down everything that you are and take on everything that they are. Okay. Do you understand? I understand. So if they, because their system works, that means we must copy that system. Not thinking <laughs> about can we get our own system or how are we going to arrange our exactly. own system? Exactly. You know, you know, pro progress is not anybody's birthright. It's an ideal. Yeah. Do you get Understood. progress, development? It means different things for different people, different contexts, different realities. I know this is one. This is one clapback you often hear from people that uh, that are very defensive about their slave mentality. You say, uh, hey, "Why don't you go back to go and believe in the huts and uh, walking barefoot?" Do you get? Why are you driving cars? Why are you using phones? Mm -hmm. And it always makes me laugh. Your identity as a person has nothing to do with the technology that is used at the time. That's even yes. ridiculous. That's even ridiculous. And I, I'll, I'll tell you why. Um, <laughs> what if you ask if you ask any basic historian, basic, they will tell you that if you look at if you if you look across all uh, different cultures, that one thing that you see about technology is that for some weird reason, all of them invented the whale. Like they had whales. Do you understand? So. You see yeah. Africans, Africans had whales. The Europeans, they had whales. The Chinese, they had the, that, the whale. Do you understand what I'm saying? So there was that technology that even though that they were, these people at that time, they, they had not uh, met each other, but there was that form of like yeah. the whale. You understand? It was, it was, it was constant. Yes. Exactly. In different areas. Exactly. Precisely. Do you get? So okay. it's that, is that, is that, fall is that it's, it's, it's a fallacious thinking. You think, oh, because this person drives a nice car. Do you understand? Uh, okay. I need to talk like him. I need to walk like him because I want to drive a nice car too. Yeah, but you can drive a nice car <laughs> and still be yourself. Do you understand? understand? And it's why I'm always particularly grateful for Asian community because they're like an example to shut that argument down. The idea that you you can embrace you can embrace technology sharing. You can borrow technology. You can borrow concepts. You can borrow ideas from others while still maintaining your own identity, do you understand? And the sense of self, doing things your own way, knowing when, okay, uh, this thing worked for this person here, but it can't work for me here because this, 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 and that, do you get? Yes. Learning how to be your own person. Mm. And the reason why it is difficult for, for um, African societies in general, it's difficult for you to hold on to something that you genuinely think is inferior. Or is useless. Do you understand? Oh. And the more we continue to progress, yeah, the, the more we continue to progress in a society that relegates our identity, that constantly associates it with negativity or under on, under development or regressiveness, okay. Okay. the more they would have less of an attachment. I see. So to so, that identity. So it says and it will get to a point where preserving it. Will be will, will, preserving it won't be more than just a uh, what's what's the word I'm looking for? It will just be an academic exercise. Nobody will really care about these things anymore. Do you understand? In a matter of time, okay. we will just become like this uh, identity mongrel of black people constantly trying to be like 
what we think our idea of development is. Do you understand? I understand. So essentially, you're saying in some form, in some form, slave, slave mentality might be brought about this idea that uh, this idea of, I don't say self, self hatred or it's like something like cultural hatred, like the way, the way you, you, you are brought up doing things. So the way you used to do things, you don't, you, you prefer, you want to swap it with other people's own because you don't like how you, you the way you do things. It might not even be that because, you know, some people grew up, some people grew up wealthy. Mm. Do you understand you know, and a, a, a large part of this problem is the Nigerian middle class. Do you understand? But okay. it still goes back to this, uh, this uh, dislike for identity. You know, and it's very common in the, in the South here, especially. Okay. People, people, people get richer. Okay. People get richer. They move up the socioeconomic class, okay. and they instantly start start fine tuning their life to be as Western as possible. Do you understand? Okay. Uh, they don't want their children to speak the native language again. Do you understand? Okay. You know, they prefer English. They take their children to elocution schools so they can sound uh, British, uh, more Western. Do you understand? Yeah. So, the, so, the, so they, uh, they give what them, are... give them, <laughs> you get it. They give <laughs> them English-sounding names. Do you understand? They, 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 you know, they just. There's this there's this gradual shift away from you know we, people even make jokes about that you know they don't they don't eat traditional foods anymore you know they eat nice nice, nice meals you get and like it, it's just this uh, it's just this it's subtle but it's there and you can't really blame parents you can, like you can't blame the individual parents because they are living in a larger society they are just trying to set their children up the way they know. We'll it's going to favor those children. Yeah, in the future, yeah. They're trying, to set, they're trying to set their own lifestyle up. The way that they will get them, will get them more credibility in their society. You get it. I understand. So the effect is now, the effect is now this sort of gradual, unconscious westernization. Not because, not because if you asked them that, are you ashamed of being a Nigerian? They will tell you, Yes, or well, you know, most people actually say yes. They are ashamed of being Nigerian. So not yeah, because yeah. if you ask them, <laughs> not, not because if you ask them, are you ashamed of your identity as a person? They say yes. I'm ashamed of who I am as a person. Or because they would completely derail from how they were brought up. Do you get? Okay. Yeah. Not not necessarily that. It's just that they just think these things are better. Do you get? They think it's better to um, speak a certain way. They think it's better to dress a certain way. They think it's better to live a certain way. They think uh, 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 certain things mm. are better, even when there is no rational basis behind it to have this behind, opinion. Yes. They just, they just feel it's just better. 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 Right. Okay. And so they just gradually move in that direction. So that's why sometimes you see, you see, you could see a a a forty-five year old Yoruba man, mm. very conk Yoruba man. That speaks Yoruba, very deep Yoruba, knows many, probably knows a lot of proverbs and stuff. Do you get mm. his favorite food is amala, hot amala? Do you get with the uh, plenty of do and begiri and shit. Yeah. Uh, but give that man a little money and let him have children. And you would see he doesn't want his children to speak like him. My do you get he doesn't want them to like the things he likes. he likes not because he's ashamed of i mean it is who he is that brought him here if you ask him ah mr mr maybe mr Droja, are you proud of who you are you probably say yes i'm very proud of who i am so it's, it's it's not necessarily because he's ashamed of who he is as an individual but because he has learned that all these things subconsciously he has learned that all these things that constitute who he is as an individual are a disadvantage or, 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 he, or he believes that that all these things that he has been doing that he's just like in level one that there is a level better and parents will always want to help make their children step up to the next level exactly My... exactly you say, say it's because I, it's because it's because uh it's because you know my parents didn't have money now we're local yeah so my... now they have money <laughs> i understand i want to give my children good life Did it? Yeah, my sister, my, my sister and her husband, they made this very interesting decision. They have three children. They have three children. None of them, okay. none, none of them have um, English names. 
And so me, me the me, I have two. I have two English names. I have Daniel and Excel. You understand? And so okay. I'm I'm the first time she named her the, the, the first child and the name was long. Tiki bo name. You understand? <laughs> <laughs> so and I asked her that what's up that ah that ah I come Zena does not have we call him Zena. His, his name is Ale Zena. That's the what's good. Okay. Yeah, the home okay. of the home of the king. You understand? Oh, wow. So we not ask we not we not ask that uh, uh, that I not ask that why why is it that she that he doesn't have an English name? She, she just looked at me that and was like, uh, Shegu, does Prince Charles have an Igbo name? I burst into laughter. <laughs> Well, like Prince Charles does not have an Igbo name, so why should I guy? Why should, why should I name my child? Why should I name my exactly. child? Exactly. So exactly. It's it's crazy now because they, they they go to British schools, or like you understand all these all these schools. Yeah. But that that this, I, to the, recently they have started speaking Igbo too. You understand? They are, I think the oldest is seven. And so I feel that there is this there is this um a desire to preserve to pres to preserve our culture i also feel that it's reasonable what he said is incredibly reasonable I, personally i think well, if i if i sorry, see okay let me, let me just cut in here because there's something that i really want to point out okay. you know that is the that is the insidious thing about slave mentality okay now what your 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 decision your sister made mm. very awesome do you understand okay but what i will point out is we are going to see more and more people making such decisions because just like I, I'm not trying to speak to your sister and her husband's intent, you know. Okay, okay. This could have been an idea she had since she was young. You get. Yeah. I'm going to I'm, I'm going to say that we're going to start seeing more of such decisions because it is now trendy. Okay, okay. It's not trendy to just name it. Oh. <laughs> just and that, that's the that's the insidious thing about oh, slavery. Everything is, you know, the moment it becomes acceptable in the West or in Europe, yeah. then it is handed down to, to the peasants. <laughs> <laughs> it's now handed down. Mm. You get, mm. and it's only handed down in steady doses. I'll give you an example, a very classic example, Afrobeat. Look at the explosion in the popularity of Afrobeats, and not just globally. Mm. In Nigeria, fam, you were alive. You were alive in the days of Nigerian music is trash. You were yes, alive man. and well. Yes. And it's only you when know, it's, it's only when we are listening to, bro. You knew that most of your friends back then to like Nigerian music was the unpopular thing. Maybe people only like Nigerian music for parties. When it's time to go on social night, we have many part, part, party songs, though. To be fair, when they say that taboo, everybody <laughs> likes Nigerian. Then, but nobody is listening to Nigerian music seriously. Do you get nobody's nobody's expecting our guys to be awarded? We're constantly talking down on our artists, saying our artists sing trash. Even though you know, when, when when you look at when you look at a lot of what people call trash, it's just local slangs that they don't care to know, and. The genres that these same people look up to, hip hop, around mm. also constitute a lot of slangs and general jargons. You get that these guys just see. Mm. Well, you'd, you'd see the average Nigerian youth that time reading articles, you know, during computer class when you're supposed to be listening to your teacher, like reading articles of computer class. class. <laughs> <laughs> then you get trying to understand what this slang means and what that slang means yeah. and where this person was coming from so they can, so they can, you know, have it in the discussion, show that they are smart. But, you know, when it comes to slangs, from your own, you know, it's just rubbish. There's nothing to it. It has to be rubbish. There's nothing to investigate there. So when, you know, thanks to the hard work of Afrobeat artists, you know, mm -hmm. that at least, you know, we thank God that, um, you know, one thing I always say is why I feel Afrobeat survived is that music is the major form of entertainment. You get. So yeah. we have music, we have, uh, we have media, that's visual media, mm -hmm. and then we have uh, books. Books aren't really popular for obvious reasons. You know, movies, you know, not everybody has a TV, not everybody can go to the cinema. You, you get, you know, movies is just about music. Yeah. Music is everywhere. Radio, yeah. someone is blasting on the speaker. You don't need mm. to look at it to hear it. You can be standing. You can be doing something like that. Yeah. So it's easily accessible. Yeah. So thankfully, the popularity of Afrobeat, popularity in Nigeria, was still driven by the streets, the masses. People who aren't educated enough to hate themselves yet. <laughs> wow. Do you, do, you, do you understand what I'm saying? So 
that, that is the energy these guys were able to feed off. Oh. All these games, Mohit, that time. That was yeah. the energy we were able to take. So, Larry. Them showing up to concerts and people storming their concerts. This is when particular people that had money. You know, that's why our celebrities went so well. They didn't have money, but they had the love. You get. Yeah. And these guys were able to capitalize on that to get the attention of the West. You know, it started in 2010. With the uh, band, you know that. Yeah, uh, that that for that. Yeah, yeah. When 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 they started saying that the band has done the Illuminati. Uh, something uh, something that I find I find interesting is, I don't know. Maybe maybe it's because we, uh, as in we are the ones that were colonized. You know, when you are the one that that, uh, that when you are the one that gets colonized, you'll have to learn their language. Although, although there are yes. obvious arguments that you know uh, places like Singapore got colonized and all this, but what I'm trying to say is that you watch, we, we are we are trained in such a way that you learn how to pronounce their words. You understand? Like there is no even as a Nigerian, there is no um, how will I put this? There is no excuse for you not not to learn how to pr pronounce words properly. Like even if I mess it up now, let's say I say tomato. There's someone that will probably be a, that, there's someone that, that will probably be listening to this part and be like, Ugh. you understand? And, mm -hmm. the, and the person's name is in Kechi, for example. You understand? Yeah, now, exactly. But but for you, you we, we, we watch me, I watch football every time, and Ihana Cho is playing. Mm -hmm. His the correct pronunciation is Ihana Cho, what they are looking mm -hmm. for. That's pronounced for They call him Ihana Cho, Ihana Cho. And in my mind, to my but, mind, yeah, yeah, they do. It's, as, it's almost as if like. Pfft, like they they, they 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 understand that we that that's a different name and i cannot just pronounce it and we we try as much as we can to learn how to pronounce their name like nothing will stop those uh what is it called? those well-paid millionaires of um you know they are, they are commentators to just call one Igbo woman one time and be like okay okay fine this is a nigerian name yes pronounce it and after like <laughs> After like three minutes, he gets his rights. You notice that they do it for other cultures. Nobody calls Gabriel Jesus Gabriel Jesus. Exactly. Do you understand what I'm saying? Is that we call him Jesus? Learn so is they this learn. these guys? They will pronounce German tongue twisting, tongue destroying German and Russian names. They will learn how to pronounce them correctly. Mm. Do you understand? Mm. But they they don't bother to learn. You get um, uh, um, African in quote names. You get, and it's not really a, me. I don't. I don't hold it against Europeans. I don't even particularly hold it against Nigerians or Africans. Okay. It's, it just pains me sometimes that a lot of people lack the consciousness. But like I said, it's just what it is. You know, when people are born into a world where there's a hierarchy, they can detect it. These are the cool kids. These are the ones everybody wants to be like. These are the ones everybody wants to interact with. And then these are the dead guys. You get mm. nobody, not even the dead guys, wants to be the want dead to associate guy. with the dead with, guys. With the you dead get guys. Yes. What, what, what you see is, for example, now, many people know how to pronounce Chimamanda's name because they are DJ. You know, yeah. they, they would struggle. They would struggle. Or you can see the genuine efforts. The willingness get. to learn. So that's what will tell you that. Africans are not condemned to being at the bottom of the barrel. You get it. We are at the bottom of the barrel. That is why we get this treatment. That is why we treat ourselves this way. You get it. If we were to move in, in areas where individuals um, succeed, African individuals succeed, and yeah. they make their cultural identity a core part of them, you get indivisible from them. And you talk about the likes of uh, Chimamanda, for example. You get it. She's very vocal about an Nigerian identity. Always, yeah, always wearing the cultural clothes at all times. Uh, at least to a fair extent, you get yes, yes. In, in the in the performative things like uh, name, clothing, mm. you get she's very insistent on those things, using Igbo language in her books from time to time. You get okay, yeah. So you'll see that she has risen to the peak of you know where one can get to as an author. You get you're talking about all time greats. She's yes. probably going to be there. Yes. So now, people who look up to her, who admire her, who respect her, are, because of that feeling they have towards her, are now taking on the task of learning the, uh, you know, learning some of the things they say in her books, how to pronounce her name, some of these evil words. Yeah. But individual efforts are not enough 
to turn it around. You get it is a national identity. And the trick is, in so far as you know, <laughs> nobody's going to nobody's going to realize it for us. In so far as we don't realize the value of our own identity, we would never develop up to the point of others realizing it for us. Does that make sense? No. Should, no, should I come again? Yeah, come again. Come again. Explain okay. it again. If you want to get upbeat, you want to nod your head, you get okay, okay. That, That's what Afrobeat was. That's what Afrobeat is now. Okay. The only difference now in the burst of popularity is that 2010-2012 period where the West began to embrace you get Afrobeat, you get mm, mm. Uh, people starting to see our artists, our top artists perform with top artists from other countries, get their respect. Uh, radio stations and brought started to play our music. Um, some of these, uh, you know, before BET used to give Nigerian artists the awards backstage. Did you know that? No, no. Did you know I'm, that? I'm surprised. They used, they used to give Nigerian wait, wait, chill, chill. At what time? At what time was this? Like which, which year was I this? Think this was pre 2010. <laughs> what the I'm, I'm, I'm not exactly sure of the time frame. What but the, the band collected the award backstage. Did you get? So the moment these guys, you know, they started to award us upstage. Did you get? Mm. That um oh, that, oh these guys are actually cooking something nice here. The uh, interest from Kanye from PDD them, you get mm, 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 then that mm. wave of Afrobeats came. All of a sudden, every Nigerian became a fan of Afrobeats. You get Afrobeats was not like our thing. You get yeah. But the only reason Afrobeats survived that long, the only reason Afrobeats wasn't completely murdered by the slave mentality of the middle class. That had already condemned Afrobeats as an unserious yeah, yeah, genre of music pre-2010. Okay. Is because, like I said, easily accessible form of entertainment. So these guys still had the mass support of the masses. You get people who aren't westernized enough to start to dislike their culture. You get people who aren't ashamed to sing Olamide mm. or to sing uh, you know songs that sound very Yoruba, you get, or sound very Igbo. People that aren't ashamed to jam these songs and say, these are my, reg these are my regular jams. You know, these are not just what I dance to at the party. These are what I plug in my earphones and listen to, you get. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's because, it's because Afrobeat was able to feed off the support for these guys, from these guys. That was the only reason Afrobeat was able to maintain its originality long enough, you get, for them to start getting that attention from the West. Before it's now fed back on Nigerians, yes. then Nigerians yeah, now got it. it. So it's as if we, we collected a cue from the West that oh, it's as if people stuff is cool now. Exactly. It's US. If it had been left to middle class Nigerians, they'd be like, ah, Nigerian music is shit. The lyrics are trash. They would have turned every Nigerian musician to a low budget usher or Chris Brown, and they still won't buy your music. <laughs> like after they make you, after they talk down on you, they okay. talk down on what makes you unique. Yeah. What, what makes it distinct? After they mm. talk down on it, and they, you know, they say you should be more like these guys because this is how this is how music should be. This is what music is. This is what good music sound sounds like. They still want to buy your stuff because you can never imitate these people that you are not as good as your original. Do you get? No matter how how hard you try, you're not going to be as good as your original. And that's why you see Nigerian rap struggles. It's not a natural market. You get yeah, yeah. it's not something that appeals to the mm. normal Nigerian ear. Yeah. It only appeals to middle if class Nigerians set up, that set up with CV, exactly trace, listening to all these hip hop artists. And then these middle class kids that grew up jamming these guys are not going to pick Vector over Eminem. <laughs> then you get, did you get they're, ne they're never going to pick they're never, they are never going to pick MI over over Drake or over Lil Wayne. Do you get? Yeah. You are just not going to do it as good as them because it is not you. It's not your identity. It's not the style you are, you are using. Oh. So that's what saved Afrobeats. And that is, you know, that's why Nollywood never survived. That's why Nollywood never survived. You know, of course, the the, the budget comes into it. You know, yeah. um, movie making is a much more budget intensive enterprise than music yeah. making. Yeah. But beyond just the budget. Okay, mm -hmm. now we have money. You know, now we have many directors that are in league with Netflix. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. What's, what stories are we telling? What stories are we choosing to tell? Um, high school drama. 
I knew you. I knew you were yeah. going to have that. Yeah, yeah, yeah I knew you. Were no, going, like you were because, going to come because it's, 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 it's right there. It's right there. I, I used like to drama. I, I like Brotherhood though. I must say. I don't no, know. I, I haven't even seen it. I've heard yeah. good reviews. Yeah, so I'll check yeah, it out. Yeah, so it it, it, it explored it explored is, crime in Lagos. It explored oh, wow. crime crime in Lagos between two brothers, um, most God um, Files and what's the name of this other gentleman? I think Toby. The Files hope, was the hope Files hope was the police. Files. Yeah, they they, they spoke in Yoruba now. But I hope there are not too many Hollywood tropes. Hollywood what, tropes. Hollywood what, tropes. What, what do you mean? Like, like uh, for example, now uh, have you seen King of Boys? Did you see the the series? Uh, the series? No, I just saw the the the, the first one. The series, I, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, I, I didn't okay. want to. I didn't want there to watch. was, there was, you know, it it, it, it was. They are they are Nigerian Godfathers. Okay. They are Nigerian crime lords. Okay. There's a way they act. Do you understand? Yeah. Then there is a way Hollywood has taught you that, that, that a, they cool, act. a cool crime boss will act. will act. Which is wrong. So you have, you get, you have Shola Shoba, Shoba Ali, yeah. who is supposed to be an, a, a, like basically a, a talk from Lagos, mm. from the streets in Lagos. Mm. And then you have a, what would you wind up? And say, gentlemen, crime. Trying, trying desperately to fit into that trope. Yeah. Do you get? Yeah. And that is what is killing, Could killing our vibe. A, a good example. Yeah. A good example of what you say. You're saying uh, the um ah I forgot the name of this this series. This Italian Italian mafia. This thing. Italian the Godfather. Mafia, mafia. No, not the Godfather. That it was this guy that acted it. Ah, uh, he's chubby like this. I forgot his name. I forgot his name. But he, he acted it. Um, he's Sopranos. Is this Sopranos? I think it's the Sopranos. Okay. The main character, okay. I forgot, I've forgotten his name. He acted, he acted as a as a don so well. The way he was dressing, the way he was, you know, they they're all about family and stuff now. Yeah. He acted about it so well that after at one point he received a call, and it was an actual crime lord, <laughs> Italian mafia <laughs> guy that told him, "See, you are doing well, but there is only one problem." He said, "What?" <laughs> Say the don, the don, the don does not wear trequata. You know how he used to wear trequata. If, if you have ever seen the series, he say he, that's the only problem. But every all of your acting, perfect. You are getting it. I and you see that, that that's how the he got how the Italians behave. It's as if that we we are ashamed of how you understand how yeah, because it's look how it's yeah, yeah, it's yeah, cool. yeah 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 it's not cool enough mm. and you know you also, you also because like you said constantly steal money like making a case for them. You also have to understand that many of these directors, all the cool crime movies they grew up watching were Hollywood movies. Do you yeah. get it? Yeah. When they think of, okay, I'm a director, I want to portray a crime because, lord. They've yeah. seen. It's what they think of are the Hollywood movies they've seen. Do you it's get God, it? Yeah, it's got for And them. they can't think or they have no willingness to think beyond that box. Yes. Do you get that? Yeah. Sells in. Because they genuinely think ah, this is a cool criminal overlord scene. This one will be cool. This one will be flimsy or ras or whatever. Yeah, you get? See, what I'm saying. Yeah, it, it's probably so, it's, fa- it's probably very funny. Uh, I don't know. It's, it's just be funny because the the actual fact is that a crime lord, you understand, will we, we'll be wear, we, we'll be working his abada, and when he's going to shoot, he's not going to wear suit. His boys will wear suit. You understand? They wear ras something, but. Yes, I, you, I can imagine the scene where, where they, are, they are going to kill the wife of the other gang, this scene, and she's, 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 yeah. pound, she's pounding him. She's uh, pounding him. The carry gun has just bust inside. You understand? Uh, <laughs> in, uh, in King of Boys, the series, um, the Shola Shobo Ali had this weird ass bodyguard, always wearing suits. We say, yes, Oba. He will now bow. You know, trying to force some House of the Dragons type of type shit. Type of b- bend the knee. You know, like, be, be, be authentic. Be authentic. You know, yeah. find a way around it. See, 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 see these Koreans now. You know, before everybody used to laugh at Korean movies, now these guys are taking over media. No you like check Netflix that. now. More than half of the new movies are from Koreans or Asians. You mm-hmm. get maybe, maybe mm-hmm. I don't want to be racist. Maybe not necessarily <laughs> Koreans. <laughs> Asians, yeah. Either yeah. Japanese people or Koreans or Chinese. There are many. Yeah, there are many Indians too. Asia. And. India, India movies, I'm telling you. And you, you would see the gradual evolution of these movie industries because they stopped 
to their identities. They weren't trying to be Western in their storytelling, in the, type, in the types of stories they chose to tell, in how they chose to unfold their romance. For example, now I'll tell you a very popular Hollywood trope. Do you know in Hollywood, sex is synonymous to love? Have you noticed? Man is trying to kill somebody, or they escape together, or blah blah blah. Yeah. They, yeah. They, they realize that ah, they are into each other. Mm. Then they have these moments where they look into each other's eyes. Maybe they exchange some mildly intimate words. Mm. Maybe somebody tells a story about their childhood, and that yeah, one yeah. says, "Oh wow, I hey. suffered the same eyes. shit." Then they kiss. Next thing you know, they are knocking. Pa, 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 pa. Then immediately after the sex scene. The, these guys are soulmates. Do you get? They are going everywhere together. Mm -hmm. They are doing everything together. The guy is sacrificing his life for the girl. Do you get? The girl is yeah. sacrificing her life for the guy, and it all turned around from that single sex scene, because that sex scene is what they've used to symbolize sure, love. That, that is what it is. Okay. Love has happened here. Do you get? They had sex, and you see that this trope is not really present in Bollywood or in the Korean movie industry. They don't really follow this trope. They explore romance as a theme in different ways that are more culturally familiar for them. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes. But in Hollywood, we've adopted that trope. Do you get? If you check a lot of our current movies now, these guys are just waiting for an opportunity to stick their mouths into each other's mouths. I don't have any beef with kissing on TV. I'm not like some prude or some moral guy. You know, I watch your <laughs> I watch Shanty Town. Of course. Yeah, yeah, I watch Shanty Town. Yeah, I even it watched was, it. I, I watched it for the same reason that many people watched it. Yes, I was like, sure, uh, I'll watch it. but then I now saw something. I was like, now I'll watch it. <laughs> you get? Yeah. I'm not like some kind of food. But we have to question: is that the is that the Nigerian understanding of romance? Yeah. Ordinary. Do you get? Yeah. Yeah. Is is that how we is that how we approach romance? Yeah. More importantly, is that a healthy way to view romance? But if you see an actor now that comes out, see, for example, this Nancy, see me babe now, that shanty town, came out yeah. and said, fam, it's not my boobs on TV, it's yeah. a body dog. And people were just going after this babe, calling her unprofessional, um, this, that. Nigerians don't know how to be professional. They don't know how to act, blah, blah. Excel, why don't Nigerians know how to be professional? Because we don't want to go naked and have sex on TV. No, no, not only that, we don't, to, we don't, we don't to see, we don't want to uh, portray ourselves how they like. If it's all, all this, uh, most if it's, if it's Hollywood, Hollywood, the same thing. Hollywood set a standard for professional. Do you understand? Okay. And other cultures, you know, sidestep that shit. That will, that one don't concern me. That's good for you guys. But this is how we want to make our own movies. But Nigerians will tell you that if you try to sidestep, it is because you are unprofessional and you are not exposed. Do you understand? Okay. That is the slave mentality. When you accept someone's narrative as superior to yours with no rational basis for it. Culture sharing is important. I feel like it's an important part of the development of the human race. True. Cultures meet, they merge, they share things. Mm. But culture, sh culture sharing can only happen when each culture that meets has an understanding of and respect for their own context, such that when they meet with somebody else, they say, oh, okay, wow, this actually makes more sense. I should do it this way. Not that they see someone and they think, oh, wow, this person is better than me. I should drop everything about how I do and follow this Just person. Copy, copy this person. When two, when two independent, equally secure, <laughs> in quotes, cultures meet, then the exchange, there's the sharing. Do you understand? They rub off on each other. Mm. But when an inferior culture or a culture that believes they are inferior meets a superior culture, then that is when we have, uh, what's the word for when uh, one culture completely dominates and washes out another one? Um, it's not appropriation. Appropriation is when you take yeah, you the word is escaping my mind right now. But basically, that is what happens. You get? Yes. So that that is the that is the slave mentality conversation. To what extent do Africans and Nigerians in particular look down on themselves for no reason at all? I'll give you one funny example that always sticks out to me. Um, a friend and I were going to Ghana for a competition. Mm. Then um, as we were going, Sha, we got to the Ghana airport. Mm -hmm. Then uh, we saw a bunch of... They were, they were 
bunch of foreigners there, a bunch of white people. Yeah. And then after we walked for a while, my friend pointed out that all the white people were very casually dressed. Like they were all wearing very pajamas like clothing. clothing yeah. Mm. And she was like, ah, I see these white people, they are so chill about travel. Like they're just wearing very chill clothing. Like if it's Nigerians now, Nigerians will cack up and then we both laughed. They, they will come up like, and wear and wear trad and wear trad and all this yeah, 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 exactly. like like, like our parents do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She dress up, you know that they're going somewhere important. And I laughed. I was like, but imagine if it was the other way around. Imagine if it were white people who used to dress up, and then it were Nigerians and Africans that used to dress very casually, shabby. Mm. What is amazing about slave mentality is that then it won't be. Ah, see these white people dressing so casually, you can tell it's not a big deal to them. Then it would be, why do Africans like dressing anyhow to public places? You know, why are you dressing so sharply? Can't you dress up? See these white people, they are dress dressing, up. They are dressed well. Oh. At least you can tell they are going somewhere. <laughs> that is the crazy thing about slave mentality. It could be the exact same situation. Do that. Mm. Just put Western culture on one end, and you would see Nigerians hype it up as the ideal, do you understand? Yeah. And put something Nigerian or indigenous, even though there isn't really anything strictly wrong with it per se, mm. but just because it is Nigerian, Nigerians will tear it down. Because there is that subconscious belief that things that are native to us, things that are indigenous to us are, are, are lesser than Jiget. They are not yeah. as interesting, not yeah. as nice, not as, not as uh, effective. How does how, so I, 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 I hope you get the point now? Yeah, I understand you. How does how does how does this how do you think this slave mentality um um how how does how does it display itself in let's say work now in the in the workplace? Do you think? Uh, well, for example, uh, I think an easy one is the fact that if you are an applicant and you are coming with a CV from a foreign university. You automatically, you know, get special treatment from HR. They won't even bother to go and check the ranking of that university. Do you know University of Ibadan outranks University of Ohio? Of what? Of Ohio. University of Ibadan. Serious. Outranks University of Ohio. Yeah, I'm serious. <laughs> on, the, on that world, that world. Yeah, 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 I know what you're talking about. We, but you, um, you, you are is one thousand. University of Ibadan is about one thousand now. As the last time no, I checked. I I think we are, we are we are we are like inside one thousand. Oh, so like 1, oh, okay, okay. Yeah, now there are something thereabouts. I think. Wow. Yes, I believe. If we go to yeah, if we go to if we both went to an interview, you okay. get mm. and you you went to the University of Ibadan certificate, and I went to the University of Ohio certificate. Who do you think they're going to instantly assume is a better candidate? Do you understand? Based off the university, do you get? Mm. And, you know, one thing you would also realize how how, it, how slave mentality factors in on, on a much larger scale is that even a lot of our knowledge yeah. in Nigeria yeah. is not contextualized. You get It's imitated. For example, now, um, a friend of mine that studied the um, food tech was telling me how um, his, um, his, his lecturer was telling them one time that none of the tractors they use in, uh, in, the, in Nigeria last too long because they were not built for our terrain mm -hmm. and weather conditions. Do you understand? Yeah. And he was talking about the fact that nobody has bothered to do anything about it you get yeah. like they just keep they keep you know they, they, they keep using machinery that certain people build for a certain yeah. context yeah, yeah, yeah. without without bothering to partner with these people to understand how you can redesign this thing for, for your you, context for your own. yes and then the guy was he, he, my friend was telling me that you see that there are many things like this even in in um in in methodology they use in engineering mm -hmm. for example now some people would maybe they would build a bridge a certain way and oh. the person that said you should build the bridge this way mm -hmm. was looking at a particular environment when he said it 
Yes. But if you carry that person's bridge and build it like that in your own place, things are not always going to work out that way because there are certain differences you yeah. get. Yeah. And, and it's not only that, Seth. In 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 in, 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 in things like the the how beautiful it is and how 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 beautiful like how how the structures still are like i don't know if you understand not just by there's, there's this thing that if, if you look at anyway this one is happening like everywhere in the world that would i give i'm, I'm saying situations like if, if if you take your time and you study let's say outside architecture it's marvelous okay. to look at it is gorgeous you understand and it's as if we we are we are the one and the, the Arabia the the um, what is it called the Arabs are the ones that they have kept that thing. They are if, if an Arab man is building a house now, chances are you still see all those paintings like how they do like how it was exactly. over, over over a thousand years ago. You understand? They exactly. like it, but we when we build our house, we want it to be you know plain to be, to be you know plain to be, to be more Western. Yes, to be more exactly. Western. Because yeah, if that. your house because if your house looks like the one in Europe, that is when you are a big man. You get that is when you are exposed, that's when you are well traveled. You know what you're talking about. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Is that association? Is that association, even though it's baseless? I know it costs us, it costs us, it costs us a lot. See, for example, now, my dear profession, we are still wearing wig and gown. Why? Ah, I Why saw. are we still wearing? I saw, it, I saw. It makes, it makes absolutely no sense. Do you yeah. understand? You, you, don't, but you, if don't you tell if you. If, if you bring it up, if you bring it up, lawyers, lawyers would defend it so aggressively. You would think it was their grandfather that wrote this into law that we should wear with that now. They would say, "Oh, it's traditional." Blah blah. blah. What, what what they argue? What they what I would imagine they argue? I'm not a lawyer, but you know it was it was um uh, this was got you from the English. But even if you say that, you see that the, the Australians did they wear wig? The Canadians. Uh, is that the proper? Yeah, Canadians. They the wear British the, themselves the, don't wear the wig again. They don't wear it again. <laughs> they don't wear it anymore. Why they we now wear it? For, they only wear it for ceremonial purposes, and I think uh, it is a particular type of trial that they wear it for. Wow, that is the thing. Do you get you, a, 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 a British man will hear we hear a Nigerian man pronounce tomato as tomato. Mm. And he'll be like, oh, you mean tomatoes? And the conversation will carry on. A Nigerian man would hear it. You, that you are Nigerian, that you speak your native language. Mm. Do you understand? That you were mm. born and bred here. You would hear your fellow Nigerian pronounce tomato as tomato. And you would burst into laughter. Like, something happened. Do you get it? Yeah. And so, yeah. when you believe, when you believe these people, you know, these people are just there, existing, doing their own thing. We are the ones who have pedestalized them. So what you find is that we defend their own way of doing things even more aggressively that than they defend it. We get keep their culture more aggressively than they get keep it. You get because we, we genuinely believe it is a sign of status, especially down here in the West. You mentioned something about the North, mm. and what you would find is that you know the North is a bit culturally different in this regard. Yeah, you would see educated um, Hausa people, and they speak their language, even down to children of the elite. You get. Yes. You would you would go to some of you would drive past some northern states. You see that there are bridges. You have these traditional Hausa paintings. Yes. You know, it, of course, they, they they are also they are also subsumed under that larger slave mentality that African society operates under. Yes. But you can still tell that difference. You get. Yeah. And that's why uh, in in. Hausa in uh, in Nigerian law, in Nigerian law, mm. um, the North, northern states are the only states that have the exclusion of British law written into law. Like they outrightly wrote it that you will not use British law to decide um, on any matter, on any matter. Yeah. unless there is absolutely no other alternative. And even then, what you would use is the most reasonable law you would find. It could be British, it could be anything else. You get. But they outrightly exclude the, the, that yeah. difference because there is that subtle cultural difference between the North and the South I guess, I guess, regarding that state. I guess there's something very respectable about that. There's always that idea. There's there's always something to admire about people that would rather think for themselves in that regard. Like exactly. I don't even understand what I'm saying. That would just that instead of just doing, you know, um copy co copy and paste. Uh, we, are, we are almost out of time anyway, but I still want to ask you a few questions. Okay, so 
how do how do we how do we get off okay. this this slave mentality how do we how do we get how, how do we you know yeah I've, I've, I've thought about it a lot i've thought about it a lot and the the answer is simple the at every given point in time in history it's only a minority of the population that moves society forward do you understand yeah. it's a minority of the population that determines the course of societies across history do you understand it's always a minority yeah. they set the pace then everybody else what, what we call the masses just and the forty nine. What what we need is a serious cultural awakening of Nigerian educated elites. And it's it's very sad because the problem originates from these same people themselves. Do you understand? These same Nigerian educated elites, their idea of what is educated, what is progressive, mm. what is forward looking. Mm. Many of those things are they are inherently they they inherently discard of Nigerian identity or cultural identity, so uh, to speak. Uh, uh, Do you understand? I want, I want to say something. I don't necessarily think yeah. it's um like our parents now, I, I feel it's more of our generation thing, or just the generation above, above, above our own. I'm saying, like, you and I, we are, we are in the same age bracket. I'm saying people that are, you know, 40-something. I think it's them that started that. Why, why, why am I saying this? You, My parents, my, my dad travels, and my mom, they travel a lot. And anywhere they go, he wears his normal thread. You understand? And they, she, she ties her own wrapper every single place she goes to. You know, no matter wherever she is, she's going to in the world. I feel... That yeah, I think, although you have made these points before, I feel that even though that they did that, they do that, like they wear it. He's a Yoruba man. He's a Yoruba man. He goes overseas. He may try. He's, yeah. he, may, he may say, "Let me, let me taste this food." Though, but if you leave him, <laughs> he's, he's shy. in his amala. Uh, yeah, he will go to his place. But it, it seems that essentially is although although is a failure of them to transfer that thing to the young ones. You understand? Like you like to us and everything. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying, because I'm they saying. because they they wear it properly and do have like I'm saying that that outward part of culture. Yeah, I'm talking about you know the dressing. Yeah. You understand? So I feel that is that disconnect between their 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 inability to transfer that thing because you 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 look at you look at the the elites. You look at what they wear. You understand? You see him wear his strad. You see his with his with son his son with son with a clue that in your mind you're like okay this is not <laughs> this is not the yoruba way but you look at the asians for example now they wear the, the dad will wear that outward part of their culture and the, yeah. the, the children wear it I saw, so that, what i'm trying to say is that although the elites have have a lot to answer for but i also feel that yeah. the young the the the, the, the the, the generation before us, you understand, they also have, yeah. that, have that issue. Yes, yeah, definitely. definitely. There, there's, there's definitely an age factor to it. There's definitely an age factor to it. Like I said, I, I'm, I'm, I'm past the point of blaming anybody or trying to sound judgy. Mm. You know, those are parents' generation, like you described. Many of them were just doing what they felt would give their, put their children ahead, you get, or you know, make their children have more status or have a better shot at society. Yeah. So, you know, when they were sending you to schools where they were focusing on you and teaching you how to speak the best English, it wasn't because they were thinking, oh, I don't want my child to speak my native tongue. It was they were thinking, oh, I want my child to be successful in life. He needs to go to a good school. And this is what they do at good well, schools. Yeah. Yeah. So, of course, yeah. the age factor comes in. But my point is, even in our generation, it's going to have to be the, the creators, the creatives. I know creative... Creative extent, it basically means just to create. It could yes. be business, it could be art, it could be entertainment. Yeah. Yes. Basically, anybody that is exactly music, anybody that is making something, and most creatives are going to come from the educated elites. Unfortunately, these educated elites in our generation are people that want absolutely nothing to do to, with, to do, to do with their identity. You get that Nigerians, you tell them they don't care what are you talking about. I don't care that I don't speak my language. These things are not important to me to get. Yeah. It, 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 to them, it has no relevance in the framework. So it's going to be a very uphill battle. But I feel like if there can be a gradual awakening 
of that consciousness amongst these Nigerian individuals, yeah. then we would start to infuse you get um afrobeat is already doing a lovely job okay. that i love the fact that it's always the trenches guys that blow in afrobeat at least you don't, now you don't you don't, you don't want yeah you don't want trust for to talk about it any jjc yeah, exactly any trust for kids trust, trust for kids to blow and they'll not be like so so you exactly. never stopped for one day in your life like uh, no. come with their accent i mean you know, david is a trust for kid <laughs> david is a trust for kid but mm. david is authentic yeah, you know, and, and the streets love him. He sings you by the songs. You know, like this boy, Odak Basile, like he knows, yeah, he knows what about, about here. Mm, mm. So, like, it's not even necessarily about wealth, you get. It's just about people with that mentality of, it, it, um, you know, just coming to whitewash, westernized things because they think that is how it should be. I'm glad that it's still trenches guys that are blowing in Africa because that's what's going to help Afrobeats maintain identity is, is so that... hopefully if we can get that consciousness and get to that point where we infuse that identity in other things we create in our business mm. in our movies do you understand mm. in our day-to-day culture in our idea of what we consider cool okay. of what we consider you know nice what we consider high status mm. then slowly it will start to change slowly it will start to change but if not, if that consciousness doesn't come, and if it doesn't come soon, uh-huh. uh, you know, I it, well, maybe it's not really something to be scared about. I do have this theory that the world is globalizing towards this one way, mass. One, one way of doing something. That, that's, I, there are two questions that remain that I want to ask you. The first one is just, is, is, is more of, shall I say, is an observation of the way me I do t- do things like that, like when it comes to all these cultural things, because um, obviously people are not going to like people are not going to ch- live was not reasonable and do something just because it's cultural. Let me let, let me explain what I mean. And I also personally personally I believe that you do things based on which one is the most reasonable. You understand? For example. I don't, I don't, I don't agree with the Yoruba way of like marriage. For example, now I'm not going to have three wives or four wives. You understand? So for something like that, it, the 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 idea of of relationship and marriage, something like that, I, I, that I, I prefer is probably do that, that of um, that of the Georgians. The Georgians they have they have this way that they look at it that I think is is really reasonable. And then you also look at. Um, um, I think the Swedes have no, no, not only the Swedes too, but I think, I think the Koreans too. They have this way of, um, the way they present their food and the way their food is. That how they how they, the, in Sweden it's called lagum, lagum. Yeah. And, and, and what that what, what that means is that everything is just perfect. It's not too much, not too small, and, and it's a life. It's a life. Um, what is it called? It's something that they apply throughout all their life. You understand that. <laughs> It's something that me personally I apply to food. You understand that that you have money. I don't know if you have noticed this thing that let's say you want to get suya and you are really hungry. You need suya. If you can't mess up and buy suya of TK, after a while you'll not be enjoying that suya again. You understand? So when you are really hungry, you should probably just buy suya of like one five. You understand? Like suya, suya is because if you can't overspend, it's just there'll be a point where it reaches demolition returns that it's no longer uh, interesting. It will kill your appetite for suya in the future. In, your, in the future, so that's the Swedes. They have that thing, and I, I, I really admire um, that. Mm. So why, why I'm bringing all this is all, all this up is that at one at what point should we should we should we dispel um, cultural as in cultural or traditional norms that okay fine. This just not do, does not make sense. Like another example, although I'm a Yoruba boy, that carving thing uh, that the draw lines, you understand? <laughs> you understand? I met, I, I met this girl recently. She, she's an Igbo girl. It's just recently I found out that some Igbo people do that. Igbo cultures do that thing too. That she she had one here. I said, I now asked that what's up? That that what happened? And she said she said that what happened was that she was born very sick. And so in their culture. If your bones very sick, when you cut the this thing, you understand? Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And so, so when, she, when she comes back, they will know it's her. Eh? <laughs> no, no, it's actually it's actually not that. They, according to her, 
they did it they, they did it so that the spirits will have mercy on the child like oh, sorry the spirits oh. the spirits will help like the spirits is it to thank the spirits but the point was that she was very sick and then they you know interceded and then she's now okay now so that's like a thank like a mark that okay fine no this this one was saved by the spirits and as she was saying this is the girl that me have been eyeing since so making sure that i was like ha! <laughs> i started on eyeing her you understand <laughs> <laughs> Bro, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't want to get spirit wife. Bro, I don't want to see, see, see. Let, let's be serious. I don't want any of that, don't that type of thing. So, at what point, like, like with what I've said, yeah. I, I think that's a reasonable approach to you get, like, for example, another example of things I like in Yoruba is the, obviously the culture and the respect in that sense that you should probably listen to your elders because they, they have seen life and they probably have an idea that you have not yet thought of. And so, and that translates to how Yorubas deal with many people. With they have just have their, it seems to be that they are very respecting people. You understand? And so, at, but there are still drawbacks. There are still negatives of this culture. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. There are still negatives of all this culture. Yeah. So, at what point do we, like, how how do you, for example, how do you know? Okay, well, this is the one I'm keeping, and this is the one I'm not keeping. Well. <laughs> Um, like I, I say from time to time, the 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 one immutable law of the universe is logic. Everything begs to make sense. Just that it's how it's how the world moves forward. Things make sense. So I feel like, you know, a lot of the cultures that we see today, just that. Yeah. They, they were things that naturally evolved out of certain contexts. And culture is dynamic. Even if even if um, Yoruba people were never colonized, you get, if we mm. never had, uh, if, if we had the highest self-esteem in the world such that nothing influenced our culture, our culture will still change on its own, spontaneously, you get. Yes. As long as the situations that people are exposed to, their environment changes, Cultural change. Uh, you mentioned tribal marks, for example. We know where tribal marks came from. It came from uh, periods where there was constant war and raging. People didn't just be able to identify themselves, you know, know exactly who you are, where you're coming from. But, you know, if you look at an oil man and, a, and if a man, you can't tell the difference just by looking at them. You get it. Yes. It had to be something extra. Yes. So that's where tribal marks came except, from. Except of course, the... now we live in, in. No, I was about to make it. I was about to. to... Speak to... Yeah, no, 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 just to say champion. Yeah, and your young man will say something. <laughs> yeah, that's a right? terrible joke. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> your young man will say champion. champion. So, of course. <laughs> now, now we live in a nation state here. Yeah. There's no need for that anymore. You get yeah. mm. So, you know, it's, 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 not, it's not really our identity is not tribal marks, it's a part of it. Yeah. Just that, but it's yeah. not identity. Mm. Our identity is our joint context that changes from time to time. The only thing I'm saying is that Nigerians should learn, and Africans in general should learn not to act against their own interests. You get should learn not to discard of things that are comfortable for them. But one thing you need to know is that even in each culture. They are always going to be. I mean, I'm talking about the the general um, cultural consciousness now. Yeah. But as individuals, mm. there are always going to be people in each culture that don't particularly mess with the culture they were born into. You get. Yeah. You go to America, for example. Now there are people that embrace Japanese culture. Americans who like, embrace mm. Japanese culture very deeply. Everything they do, they try to dress Japanese. Blah blah blah. In Japan, there are people. I was watching this TikTok video. Um, and it's basically for this group of guys that basically are really into Jamaican culture, but they're Asians, you get. Okay. So there's always going to be that individual freedom to make choices, you get. Yeah. But as a as a group, as a community, mm. do you understand? Yeah. Are you doing what makes sense for you at the time? Or are you just chasing some imaginary standard that you think there is, you get, because you, you, you've pedestalized a certain group of people? So the, the test is always going to be reasoning. It's always going to be reasoning. 
does it make sense? And then, of course, we now have to get to the inevitable point of different things make sense to different people. You know, where I agree on what makes sense. But this is when you have to start interrogating people's reasoning. Do you understand? And really asking why. When you see that certain things are a certain way, you ask why. For example, now I was standing, I was talking to a friend. You know, they were serving, we we're trying to organize a program, like it's kind of like a TED talk. So it got to the point of discussion refreshment. Then this teammate was complaining about how uh, uh, meat pies and egg rolls were so expensive these days, blah, blah, blah. And um, refreshment is going to cost a lot. Yes. I was like, ah, why don't we consider more indigenous snack food options? You know, maybe Bali, there's Bali, there's a. Uh, there's a cara. You know, there's a bunch of traditional food options that you know are tasty and people would yes, enjoy them. Uh, people enjoy. And then you know, she looked at me like I was mad. You get like self at the talk. Like, what do you think this is? Do you think this is? And then, of course, the jokes start flying out from team members. Hey, this, you know, this is not trenches. Step up. Do you think this is gonna come? Blah blah blah. Isha, you know, the jokes just kept flying. And, you know, Nigerians, we get really creative now. When it's time to shoot on ourselves, we get really creative. So the jokes just start flying out. I know. It, that's just like a it's just like a microcosm mm. of what the real problem is even when it doesn't make any sense do you get yeah. even when it doesn't make any sense nigerians will discard off their own things or the way they do things because they just believe it is low class they just believe it's inferior and it's just very deeply ingrained into their minds so you know um american culture has a very huge influence in japan no, but you can't you can't look at Japan and say, yeah, they've lost their identity. Do you understand? Mm. Um, uh, Japanese culture has a huge influence in the UK, for example. But you never look at British people and doubt that British people act That's like it. British people. Do you understand? Or they understand their own context. Mm. So when we get to the point where we divorce ourselves from the idea that things that are Nigerian are necessarily inferior just because they are Nigerian. Then it will become much more easy for us to, you know, really mix and merge well with other cultures. Really know that okay, mm. you know, this actually this one makes more sense than how we do it. I understand. I understand what you're saying. I understand this. So you only change things when it makes sense for you. When when it makes sense for you, don't exactly. don't don't lose a part of um of the identity you are born in. No, not born in per se, or the or, or your identity, like your cultural context because of uh most god just because yeah. you feel is your own is inferior without understanding why like you first have to say okay fine why do they do this thing like this and is it better than the way me i do things and everything oh, that's that, that's, exactly. that's, that's, uh, that's you that's, you that's brought up the issue of you brought up the point of the respect yeah. your back culture can you hear yeah. me yeah i can hear you i yeah. can hear you and i you know yeah that's that's an interesting point to raise actually because, you know, a lot of people don't understand why such emphasis is placed on age in Yoruba culture. And, and you know, not just Yoruba culture, but you notice that it's it's many Nigerian cultures, a lot of respect is placed on age. If someone is elderly, you mm -hmm. give them respect. And what people don't think of is that for the longest time, there was no writing in these cultures. Do you understand? Yeah. So knowledge was passed down orally. Mm. Do you understand? Mm. So, the older a person was, you know, old people were like living encyclopedias Even for their it's... communities. Yeah. So, a lot of emphasis had to be placed on age because it was an oral culture where age was very important. Do you understand? Yes. You know, instead of people to try to understand the context and see how we can rearrange ourselves, you know, in this new modern age where you know, age is not really age is not necessarily a marker of uh, intelligence or even necessarily wisdom. Per se. Yeah, yeah. What you have just people saying, uh -huh. what you just have just people saying, oh, exactly. Nigeria, uh, Nigerian culture is shit. All this age nonsense. Why must I respect you because you are old? Just talking out of their ears, do you understand? Because they don't really understand their own right. context. Do you understand? Yeah. So, yeah, it's a lot of it is just understanding and trying to think of the extent to which you've internalized this idea that, you know, Western is progressive and Nigerian or African is regressive. Really you have to really query yourself, you know. It's all of us. I used to I used to be the kind of person I used to laugh when people speak and they had accent interference. 
You know, I used to laugh at them. When people would tabon, you would laugh at them, do you understand? Or, you know, they pronounce a word wrongly, you mm-hmm. would laugh. Mm-hmm. You know, but now, and I think back at all those things and it just, it seems silly to me, you get, because nobody ever laughed at French people mispronouncing English words. They thought it was cute. They thought it was romantic, <laughs> you get. So why is an Igbo man's uh, television? Why is it such a Basel. why is it such a jiget? Why, uh-huh, why is it such a why is it such a big deal? Mm, yeah. So it, it's just it's a lot of really stepping back and just trying to unlearn that subtle mentality and applying the test of reason to everything. Does it make sense yeah. for me, for my context, for where I'm coming from? Mm. Is this what works better for us as a community? Yeah. Uh-huh, that we move forward from. Okay, so so essentially, what we are saying is, if we are to if we are to push back against this, um, from from what we have said so far throughout the discussion is that first things first, uh, yeah. the people that will probably carry the trend forward are probably the elites, the elite, the uh, most got creative yes. elites to be more specific, the creative elites will yes. carry forward, and two, if we are to move forward, if we are to um, move, um, get away from this mindset, we also have to. Um, like individuals have to get ask why and and become more reasonable as that to to ask questions that what was the context as which this was yeah and this you know and yeah. before before we do things okay yeah. that makes sense because one other thing that we also have to consider I'm, I'm just bringing this up before because the time is running up one thing that we we'll consider self is that we also look at things like um, there. Are, in in, the, in in a world that is that is chasing objectivity, uh, although I, I I don't agree with that mentality, but the world is in some sense trying to get what is the perfect of everything, you understand? And there there, there are still some things that we know that they are perfect. What I'm trying to say is that if if if, if I tell you that you're eating something now, like there are some foods that are not just healthy for you. I think I watched a video where um, this gentleman, she's from, he's from um, Hawaii. No, 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 no. Haiti. Haiti. He's from Haiti. And, you know, from all these places that um, the, the people there were enslaved before. And, and most of the stuff that we were eating were very, um, you know, they had, they had plenty oil. Like a ridiculous amount of oil. You know how they, they say that, you know how they say Yoruba is like oil too? Yeah. Uh-huh. And so he was saying that, listen because it's our food that we grew up with and it's our cultural this thing like if you come to our house that's why yeah, i expect you, you expect me to serve you and stuff does not mean that it's healthy you understand so if we look through that that lens now there are things that like it's going to like it's going to preserve some things and it's also going to remove some things because there are some things that we are doing culturally that does not make any sense like 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 in the one like the example i gave that we are trying to preserve life you want to eat healthy you understand there are some foods that we just have to go. Yeah. Do you understand what I'm saying? Like, like how we we are obviously rice will not go, but an obsessive amount of rice. <laughs> you understand that Yoruba foods that you see a Yoruba man that early in the morning, eba. Then uh, in the afternoon, pound the jam at night, amala. And it's like that's an excessive amount because it's our food. It's our food. You understand? So I I I think that the the more um, scientific we get and the more we start start to understand these things, there there will inevitably be parts of our culture that would have to go in the way of reasoning. And so that's why I actually support this argument that you you just you said a little bit of that the way the world is going is as if there will be a convergence at one point towards this the way that the whole world <laughs> does things because yeah. people pe- pe- people are not going to see something that does not make sense and then just leave it and then does not do it so i would imagine that in some sense we also have to just out of pure pride what i mean by pride is pride in where we are from and and do something like even though it does not make sense i've built in my i've built my house as let's say i'm someone from um i'm an arab and i've built my house i'll just do all those arabian paintings you understand although that i may not enjoy let's say some of their foods i feel that is not healthy for me and I'll make sure that my child speaks the language, for example. Something like that. I feel that there'll be a lot of cherry picking in, in this in, 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 in all those type of things. There will definitely be a lot of cherry picking. Uh, like I said, you know, everybody's not always going to be in tune to the culture to the same degree. Yeah. As individuals, at the end of the day, 
if people like what they like, you get. Right. Um, if someone likes is Lil Wayne's music that makes them feel alive, no amount of uh, propaganda is going to make them start listening to Ashake because they want to prove that they are Juget. They, get they want to prove that they are they're Juget. But it's just, it's just important we get to a point where things that are Nigerian are not deemed inferior just because. Just, just because. Uh, just, that's, just, that's just the point we have to get to. Of course, there's always, there's always going to be variations. New knowledge is always going to come up. Come up. going to make certain things. Like I said, you know, even if Nigerians were the only people in the world, if there was no other culture, you get mm. our culture will still change we'll on its right. own you get yes, so yes. you know how much more when there's interaction with different knowledge perspectives from different places around the world mm. there will definitely be a change but you would only change healthily if you are changing from a secure position just and of confidence okay. and pride in where you come from okay in your okay. identity um last la- last question because we're second to the last question where um when are you going to write a book about this or do you plan to write a book about this type of stuff? Or, or do you I, think I, that I, you know it, it's much easier to talk than to than to do? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There, so there, like, is that okay, I was listen. about I, I was about to advise you on something. There are ways that you can do it if you are just you know, you know there there, there you know there are many books that are uh, much good, like years like hundreds of years ago that how they would do it is that the man will just stand and be and be like this and be talking and then yeah, somebody will be writing <laughs> and so and so you know <laughs> they I, don't, are, I don't have that much money yet <laughs> it's not, it's not, no no i'm saying that i'm saying that there is a cheap way through ai now uh, through ai yeah that i think there is this okay. there is this um um, um app Jasper. On, there's yeah yeah something like that otter the one i use is otter you understand o the o t t e r and so what, what you just okay. do is that i think I think you get how many minutes how many minutes every i think an hour every day or there about i've forgotten the free version yes so if okay. you pay you can imagine it's unlimited and so what i do what you just do is that you just talk like you let's say you you, you uh what's good you itemize your ideas or you list your ideas yeah. and then you now talk about each one then after you can now edit you know so okay. if you, you know so you can you can That's make your argument yeah yeah you can use other to do. i don't know it's on um it's on it's on it's on apple so yeah, you're not planning on writing a book about it anytime soon. And I, I, I do have that desire, but it's just that you know when it's time to write a book, you, you always get confronted with that idea that maybe you don't know enough yet. You know, maybe oh. you should read a bit more. You know, get a bit more authority behind your name. Mm. Or you know, maybe that's just like a lie we tell ourselves. Not um, difficult. Yeah. But yeah, it is. It's definitely something I have in mind. Even if I want to go ahead to write a book, mm. eventually when my medium. Um, account becomes active. I'll be dropping regular articles. Regular, this, uh, yeah. Uh, on, uh, on on top. Eventually, yes. It's well, how come your media account is not active? I would, I would like to. I'll, like, I'll, I'll get Substack now. Uh, okay, yeah. Substack is also a good idea. Yeah, I guess I read Substack. On oh, okay, okay. I read so on, that's, so I read on Substack. I, yeah, I just don't write. I just don't mm. write yet. But Substack. soon enough. Hopefully. Substack, Substack is the future, man. The future mm. for like for writers or for you know people that okay. enjoy that thing. Yeah. Okay. Just, do, they, do they have a monetization platform as well? I don't know. I just go there to look at look at look at to their read. stuff. Okay. Yeah, to read to, to read to read their stuff. I would once in a while when I get when someone says go and read this article that is dope as fuck. Did you read um, Karim Abdul Jabbar's article on um, LeBron breaking his record? How you be pissed? Is he pissed at me? Is he angry? Sorry, I say he's angry. No, he wasn't angry. He, the article was about him saying. He he's hurt. That everybody feels he's annoyed at it. Because well, because people are you saying that he doesn't get one. Please, please. <laughs> if, me, if it were me, I'll be furious. Forget all this things that they're saying. <laughs> Uh, it stood, uh, but, but he tries. Uh, he stood for fifty something years. You know I mean? I'll, yeah. be, I'll be furious. Ah, uh, <laughs> like if I was a footballer and 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 what is it called? And uh, Ronaldo is about to break my record, for example. I would, there's nothing funny about, like, um, I, I think this inter, the one that Ronaldo broke for international goals. You understand oh, yeah. uh, that it was um, was one of this gentleman from Ireland, um, Keen. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And so Keen was like, he, he tweeted that time that um, when when it was remaining, like, I think two goals for Ronaldo to pass. Uh, yeah. he, he tweeted and was like, Ronaldo, of all these records you have, say you cannot just leave this one for me. <laughs> That night, that night, Ronaldo scored hat trick. 
<laughs> All the response. This guy that we can pass the record. I mean, I'll, 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 I'll be annoyed. I'm not going to lie. I mean, nobody wants to be remembered as you know. Yeah, oh, yeah, really to be it. forgotten. Yeah, to be forgotten right now, to be you know seen as the second best. People just yeah. look at highest goals. Nobody looks at who's the third highest goals. Yeah, yeah. We don't look at definitely. the highest. And so he's, well, he's, I, 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 I also feel like playing at that level. One thing all of them get to understand is that you know, nobody's time is forever. True, you get. True. I think it's one thing all of them would have had to confront at one point. Or two, at some point, you know? yeah. And I mean, something yes, that's huge. He tried. He tried. Yeah. You get. Okay. So. The article was basically just him saying like he was always rooting for LeBron, and like you know he, he mentioned how some I think there's a song called Kevin Magic the Magic Johnson. Eh, hey, Magic Johnson, yeah. You don't know anything about sports, guy. I don't. I barely know anything. Once it comes to watching, like watching teams and following them, just count me out. I don't barely know. Magic so Johnson. the guy was he was saying how the Magic Johnson guy said in an interview that uh, he would be furious. If LeBron broke the record, and he was like, it hurts him because he didn't see any reason why the guy would think that you get. But it was it was an interesting article to read. Yeah. It was very very yeah. interesting to read. And did you see the memes on Twitter? Yes, no. <laughs> they kept roasting that guy. <laughs> and the point was the way his face was. Let I I watch yeah, I, 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 yeah, I, I actually watched so that bad. game. I watched that game. His face was like you know all these all these you know the Russian poker face now like the the way they. Yeah. Do, that you don't know if they're happy or sad, but his own is that it was now like tilted with a bit of sadness. I don't know if maybe that's just his, his resting face is sad. And the fact that he's, was, you know, he's really skinny, he looked, oh, ah, yeah, it was making it, it was I just, thought. yeah, they, 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 they went to school on him. They went to school on him. He said, he said they woke an old man up from his house <laughs> just to come and watch his record get broken. Get broken. Yeah, that's what I said, me, I won't come. I will not come. In fact, I'll threaten the guy. I'll be like, see, see that shot if you take it. If you take it. <laughs> Bro, it's... Anyway, Sha, you, should, you, should, you should get our Substack. Okay. Um, now, okay, now that we know that you're, you're having a Substack account, where should where should people, uh, you know, like where do you post your work or, or your social media and just so that people will follow um, you? My, my medium is, I think, Uluwadaralania. There's not much content on it yet, uh, unfortunately. So I don't know. There's not there's nothing to send people to fans yet. Yeah. The only platform where I have some form of content is Quora. I used to write on Quora way back when, 2016 mm. or so. That was a long yeah. time ago. Yeah, that's a long time ago. Way back when. So um my name there is Daryl Lanio. But you know, eventually when it comes out, mm. um I mean, you definitely hear about it now. So uh, yes, now of course. I'll put, I'll put it out there. I'll put it out there. Try to for, my stuff. for someone like you that is very, what's that word? Is very um, opinionated. Vocal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I think I butchered that word. It's vocal. That is what I say. <laughs> <laughs> yes, for someone like you that is very vocal, you know, you have, you have plenty of ideas. You should always have. Yes. And you, you like writing now. I know you like writing. So you should be, you should be dropping something now. Yes, then. Definitely. Definitely. Yeah. It's in the works. It's in the works. <laughs> I don't know. That, it was, it was I really mean, this, this, this podcast too has inspired me. I mean, like, it's, it's small now, but you're starting something here. Yeah. And yeah, uh, yeah. it's Start. definitely a lot of thought that is going into it. It's, it's, it's inspiring, actually. Uh, thank also you. Also, take our own two steps too. <laughs> I, you understand? It's now, now. It's, it's, it's now that you're young that you should be doing all this yeah, stuff exactly. now. Yes, I cannot be having five children now that they're running around here. <laughs> yes, I'm and, telling you. And the, the, the last one looking at me that, listen, I need Pampas. Yes, and <laughs> I, I, you're, you're not having a podcast. It seems reasonable to start it now. Where, like, the, the next event I have today now is Arsenal match yeah. by 4 30. So I like, yeah. I like, I have enough time, actually. So, time. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. But so tell your friends, Sha. Yeah, tell, definitely. Tell your friends, you know, for people that I, I would like to discuss with, you know, given that the people I, I, I spoke to in uni were few, or very few, like, you know, do you understand what I'm trying to you, know, you know, it's when yeah, I met Steven that I now met you. You understand? Yeah. Uh -huh. So, so if, if if there are more people that are, I always post it that if someone is willing to, you know, let's discuss about something. I'm always down. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, sure. I'll take put care. It out there. Okay. Out there. Okay. Take yeah, care of you yourself, too. man. Thank you. Yeah. yeah.